Hey guys, Dr. Dane here. This week we're going to get back to basics, like really back to basics. We will be discussing important concepts that are essential to understanding and predicting the course of a pandemic. We will start by looking at epidemic curves and then move on to discussing infectivity, case fatality rate, vaccine efficacy and herd immunity. Throughout the video I will show you how these concepts can be used to estimate two things that I am sure you're very interested in learning. Firstly, how many people will die during a certain pandemic? And secondly, how many people need to be vaccinated for us to eliminate a specific infectious disease? We will then apply these concepts to the current pandemic in a follow-up video. It might be a bit complicated in parts, but I promise you it will all come together in the end if you just stick with it and watch the whole video. My goal for this video is to break down these complicated concepts into their simplest form, but if you want more details, make sure to drop a comment or a question below and I'll be happy to address them. Firstly, let's define what a pandemic is. It is a widespread outbreak of an infectious disease at a particular time across the globe. It is essentially an epidemic that is just global in nature. Now to understand a pandemic, the most essential tool we have at our disposal is the epidemic curve. This curve can be used to track new cases over time and help us to analyze the spread of disease. Here you can see an example of a hypothetical epidemic curve. From analyzing epidemic curves, researchers can determine characteristics related to how an infection spreads, such as incubation period and infectious period. The incubation period is how long people take to become symptomatic and is important because diseases with longer incubation periods are harder to trace. The infectious period is the time when a person can pass on the disease and is important because diseases with longer infectious periods have more opportunity to spread. One concept I'm sure you've heard people talk about is the idea of flattening the curve. Now what curve are we flattening? Well, it's actually the epidemic curve that we're trying to flatten. When people talk about flattening the curve, they mean slowing the spread of the epidemic so that the peak number of cases is reduced. This gives health systems time to adapt, to make sure they are not overwhelmed, as well as to give time to develop new strategies for fighting the disease, such as a vaccine. Next, we'll discuss the concept of infectivity, or r naught which is determined at the start of an epidemic and is defined as the number of people on average a person with the disease will infect. A higher value means the disease is more easy to spread. Now, let's compare the estimated r naught values for a few widely known infections that have led to epidemics or pandemics in the past. For example, if you get measles, you will likely infect 15 other people assuming that no one already has immunity from it. One important thing to realize is that the infectivity or R number decreases throughout a pandemic because more and more people develop immunity. Throughout the video, we will use these diseases listed in the table to help us understand a few other ideas. One more topic before we get onto the role of vaccines in a pandemic is the concept of case fatality rate which is defined as the proportion of people that die as a result of becoming infected. I'm going to put the calculation here for you guys, but essentially it's calculated by dividing the total number of people that get the infection by the number of people that die from the infection. However, the case fatality rate is a very difficult number to calculate accurately because of challenges associated with detecting the infection in everyone that has it, as well as with challenges associated with determining whether the infection was the cause of death in a specific person. And now, getting back to our table, you can see that these diseases have a wide range of estimated case fatality rates, from less than 1% to over 60%. So, you want to know how many people will actually die from a pandemic? Well, you need to understand both infectivity and case fatality rate because they both contribute. And no, they don't always go together. Now onto the fun part, and that is examining the role that vaccines play in helping to combat pandemics. 
Vaccines have a long history in helping to fight disease. Do you remember smallpox? Well, you probably don't if you were born after 1980 because by then this disease was already eliminated from the world due to mass vaccination campaigns. So now let's take a deep dive into a topic that I have spoken about before and that is vaccine efficacy. I'm sure you've heard a lot about it but it's a commonly misunderstood topic so make sure you pay close attention to this part. Someone's in already? You're never gonna not get up from here. Vaccine efficacy is calculated using something called relative risk, which is the proportion of people in the vaccinated group that get the infection compared to the unvaccinated group. Okay, now we're going to go through an example which will demonstrate how we can use relative risk to calculate vaccine efficacy. And to do this, we're going to create two groups. One group that gets vaccinated and another group that doesn't. This one's called the control group and this one will be the intervention group. In each group, there'll be a thousand people. And then let's imagine in the vaccinated group, there are five people that get the infection, whereas in the control group, there are 50 people that get the infection. We can then use these numbers to calculate a relative risk using this formula and it's pretty big formula. So people in the intervention group that have the invent or the infection divided by all of the people that are in the intervention group divided by the people in the control group that have the event over the people in the control group that have the event plus the people in the control group that don't have the event. And using the numbers in our example, we can see that there are five people that got the infection in the vaccinated group, over 50 in the control group, and this gives us a relative risk of 0.1. Now we can use this number to calculate vaccine efficacy, which is 1 minus the relative risk times 100%. And using our example, we can plug in relative risk of 0.1 to give us a vaccine efficacy of 90%. So this is how relative risk can be used to calculate vaccine efficacy. Here are some vaccine efficacy values for the infections we've been covering so far. As you can see, the vaccine efficacy values historically have been very high. The last topic that we need to cover today is that of herd immunity and how it can be used to calculate vaccine level. Herd immunity is the concept that individuals who are immune to an infection, either through prior infection or through vaccination, function to decrease the transmission of an infection throughout a population. Each infectious disease has a herd immunity threshold that, if reached, will lead to the gradual extinction of the infection. Herd immunity threshold, or HIT, can be calculated using this formula, which is 1 minus 1 over the R0, or the number we've seen previously. But still, we need to go one step further to look at the total number of people that need to be vaccinated in a population for us to be able to reach herd immunity. And this is known as the vaccine level. And it's essentially the herd immunity threshold divided by the vaccine efficacy. As you can see, using this equation, if the R0 value of an infection goes up, the number of people that have to be vaccinated also goes up. With the vaccine efficacy though, if the vaccine efficacy goes down, then this will mean also the number of people that have to be vaccinated goes up. Now let's use measles as our example to calculate vaccine level. So for measles, the R0 is approximately 15 
and the vaccine efficacy for measles is approximately 97%. So that comes up to approximately 94%, which means 94% of the population has to be vaccinated for us to achieve herd immunity with measles, which is an extremely high number, which is perhaps why, as a global community, we have still not been able to eradicate this disease. Here are the estimates of vaccine levels for the infectious diseases we have been focusing on. As you can see, there is a very wide range. Okay, so let's go ahead and now summarize what we've covered. We first looked at the anatomy of epidemic curves and how they can be used to analyze the propagation of disease. And then we showed how infectivity and case fatality rate are the determinants for how many people will actually die during a pandemic without intervention. And finally, we saw how the concepts of herd immunity and vaccine level are used to determine how many people actually need to be vaccinated in order to stop a pandemic. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll apply the concepts that we've discussed today to analyze the current pandemic. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe and most importantly, that you share this knowledge with your family and friends. Cheers.